1997, Apple Computer was on the verge of bankruptcy. The company had experienced years of financial loss, losing $161 million in Q4 of 1997 alone. In short, things were not looking good for Apple. But that year, after the merger between Apple and Next Software, Steve Jobs returned to the company and was named the interim CEO. This resulted in a swift restructuring of Apple's product line, slimming it down to four main products. A year later in 1998, one of these products came to fruition. It was a consumer desktop computer that was about to resurrect the dying company and help bring the World Wide Web to consumers worldwide. That machine is the iMac. The original iMac, or the iMac G3, is credited with helping Apple Computer get back to being profitable again. After years of stagnation and a lack of innovation in Apple's product line, the iMac hoped to get people excited about Apple products again. At a 1998 Apple special event where Steve Jobs introduced the machine, the iMac played a short introduction video, much like the original Macintosh did in 1984. It ended with the text, Hello, in the original cursive font from the 1984 Macintosh launch, and underneath it, the word, Again, in parentheses. This signified that the iMac was not just another Apple computer, but a rebirth of the original Macintosh. The machine was designed by Jonathan Ive and looked unlike any other computer on the market at the time. While most computers were housed in beige boxes, the iMac used translucent colored plastic to house the entire machine. The original model came in Bondi Blue, but other colors were available down the road. The iMac was released on August 15, 1998 and sold for a price of $1,299. It came standard with a 233 MHz PowerPC G3 processor, 32 MB of RAM, which could be expanded up to 128 MB, a 4 GB 5400 RPM hard drive, and an ATI Range 2C graphics card with 2 MB of SG RAM. Taking a look at the front of the machine, we can see the 15-inch CRT display, which had a resolution of 1024 by 768. Underneath the machine, we have a stand that can be used to adjust the height of the display. We also have two stereo speakers, two headphone jacks, an infrared port, power button, and, for the only means of built-in data transfer, a tray-loading 24x CD-ROM drive. In a move that was somewhat controversial at the time, Apple abandoned the 3.5-inch floppy drive that the industry had used for years, saying that CDs are the future. And they were correct, although it took other computer manufacturers like Dell a few years to go CD only. On the right side of the machine is where you will find the I.O. All of the ports are conveniently contained behind a small door towards the bottom. Inside, you will find a mic and headphone jack, two USB ports, an Ethernet port, and a modem port. Similar to the 3.5 inch floppy drive, Apple got rid of all previous forms of peripheral connections and offered USB as standard, being the first computer manufacturer to do this. Moving to the back of the computer, we see the power port located towards the bottom. Much like the original Macintosh, Apple included a handle on the top. While this machine was not designed to be portable by any means, the handle did help with picking up and moving the iMac. Now let's talk accessories. The iMac came included with a redesigned keyboard and mouse that were also made out of translucent plastic to match the design of the computer. The keyboard has a long bar on the bottom, replacing the traditional feet, and included two USB ports, one on each side, so that devices like the mouse could be plugged in. And this is what brings us to the infamous Hockey Puck mouse. Look at this mouse. It's the most, it's the, it's the most wonderful mouse you've ever used. Long story short, it wasn't. The mouse was not ergonomic or comfortable to use, especially by people who had larger hands. Due to the unpopularity of the Puck Mouse, Apple discontinued it two years later when they introduced the Pro Mouse. The iMac originally shipped with macOS 8.1 pre-installed, but could be upgraded to as high as macOS 10.3.9 Panther. The machine I have here is dual booted with both OS 9 and OS 10.3.9. Thank you. 
The iMac G3 line of machines was updated with new models throughout its lifespan. The original model, known as Revision A, was released in August of 1998. A few months later in October, Apple introduced the Revision B model. This model was almost identical to Revision A, but had a better graphics card and shipped with macOS 8.5 rather than 8.1. Then in early 1999, the iMac G3 received its first major update. Revision C updated the processor from 233 MHz to 266 MHz and bumped the storage from 4 to 6 GB. The most noticeable change in Revision C, however, was the outer casing. These iMacs were available in five different colors, blueberry, grape, tangerine, lime, and strawberry. In April 1999, Apple released the Revision D, which further updated the Revision C models with a faster 333 MHz G3 processor. The model I have been showing throughout this video is a Revision D iMac in Blueberry. In the fall of 1999, Apple discontinued the tray loading model iMacs and introduced a whole new line of machines. These machines slightly changed the design of the previous iMac models. The outer casing was made more transparent, the port door was removed, and the tray loading CD drive was replaced with a slot loading one. Apple subsequently released three updated models to the slot loading iMac, each bumping up the processor speed, memory, and graphics performance. Apple also made special edition designs available for purchase, including the blue Dalmatian and flower power models in early 2001. The model I have here is an indigo model from the summer of 2000. There would be two more revisions after this one before the iMac G3 line of machines was replaced by the Sunflower iMac G4. Overall, the iMac G3 was a big stepping stone for the once-dying computer brand. It helped to re-establish Apple computers as easy to use and simple, and in some ways changed people's perspectives on what a personal computer ought to be. It made computers look exciting and fun, rather than boring and dull. Without it, Apple might not have had as fast of a resurrection as they did, if any at all. By Q1 of 1999, Apple had made $152 million in profit, tripling its Q1 1998 profit of just $47 million. It was clear that Apple was back in the game and in a big way. That's all for today's episode. I'd like to thank all of you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe down below if you want to see more videos like this in the near future. And also be sure to drop me a comment letting me know your thoughts on the iMac G3 line of machines. Have you ever used one, or are you just discovering the existence of the machine today? Either way, I'd love to know what you guys have to say. And as always, I will see you in the next video.